Hello, everyone. Welcome to Teaching in Room 9, the area's largest classroom. I'm Mrs. Ford from the Rockwood School District. I'm excited that you're joining me again today as we really spend some time thinking and talking about one of my favorite things, words. Yeah, if you've been there with me before, you know that I love books, I love reading, I love words. And I thought, hmm, we did such a great job last week digging into a book and thinking about words and the parts inside the words that we were looking at. I thought we could do some more work with words. What do you think? Yeah, I'm really excited for what we have planned this week. We're really going to spend time thinking about the words that authors choose to use. There are so many words out there, and sometimes there's words that mean the same thing as other words. Yeah, those are called synonyms. They kind of mean the same thing. We're going to talk about synonyms this week. We're also going to talk about, hmm, what is the author really trying to say here when we get to a new word? So we're going to talk about words we know, words maybe we don't know yet, and how we can really think about what the author is trying to say in the sentences that they write. Okay, so I have a new book that we're going to spend time with as we do this work together. I actually just got this book, and it is an amazing book. Do you have a best friend? Oh, I see a lot of you like, yes, I do, I do. Yeah, me too. So this story that we're going to read is about two best friends. That's right. And something they like to do together and then a problem that happens to them. And so as I'm reading today, I want you to think about your best friend. And it's going to help you really think about how the characters in this story are feeling. So you've got a good picture in your mind of your best friend. Okay, keep that picture in your mind. Think about how you feel about your best friend. And as I read today, think about how you would feel if this was about you and your best friend. So the name of the book is Paper Planes. Paper Planes was written by Jim Hellemore and Richard Jones. This was published by Peachtree. So thank you to the authors and the publisher for allowing us to read this book today. I know you're gonna love this. The authors do such an amazing job using beautiful words and the illustrations are beautiful also. Are you ready to read Paper Planes? Okay, remember, be thinking about your best friend as you listen to this story, Paper Planes. So look, do you see it? Yeah, it's a paper plane. Have you ever made a paper plane before? You have? Yeah, they're awfully fun to make, aren't they? Okay, ooh, here's a blurb. You know I like to really start with a blurb to get my mind ready to read. So I'm gonna go ahead and read the blurb to you. It says, Mia and Ben are the very best of friends and they love making paper planes together. One day, maybe they'll make a plane that can fly all the way across the lake. But when Ben moves far away, it seems that will never happen. With a little bit of hope, however, and a great big imagination, Mia learns her friendship with Ben isn't over, no matter the distance between them. So now we know the problem, don't we? So we know the characters' names, Mia and Ben. Those are the best friends. And what's the problem? Were you listening? Yeah, what'd you hear? Yeah, Ben moves away. Okay, so right now, remember I told you to think about your best friend? What would you do if your best friend had to move away? How would you feel? Show me with your face. Oh, you guys look so sad. So you're imagining that it would be really sad to have to say goodbye to your friend and I bet that's how Mia's feeling. Yeah, you're able to connect to the characters in the story and we haven't even started reading yet. Okay, think about those thoughts, are you ready? Paper planes by Jim Helmore and Richard Jones. Mia and Ben were the very best of friends. They lived side by side on the edge of a great wide lake. They sailed together. Look at the horses. I would like to live at a place like that. And swung and sang together. But what they loved doing most of all was making planes. 
In the winter, Mia and Ben would race their planes with the geese above. And in the summer, they would climb into the hills and toss their planes down below, watching them glide home. Mia and Ben were determined to make a plane that could fly all the way across the lake. But it wasn't meant to be. It would be really hard to get a paper airplane to fly all the way across the lake, wouldn't it? Ben had terrible news. He was leaving. His family was moving to a new home, a long way away. Me and Ben were crushed. How could they stay best friends if they were so far apart? Yeah, can you feel the worry between them? That is sad, you're right. Makes me wanna cry a little bit too. They promised to never forget one another and they swapped planes as they said their goodbye. As the days passed, Mia missed Ben very much. She thought of him way over the sea and wondered if he was lonely too. Winter came again, but when the geese returned this time, Mia had no one to race planes with. Hot tears fell from her eyes. Mia and Ben would never make a plane that could fly across the lake now. Mia took the plane Ben had given her and smashed it on the ground. She went to bed feeling hurt and angry. She's got some big feelings, doesn't she? You had big feelings before that you just didn't know how to handle them? Yeah, that's totally normal. Sometimes our feelings are so big, we don't know how to let them go. And she, she threw that plane that Ben gave her on the ground and it crushed. I bet she'll regret that the next day. What do you think? Wish that she didn't do that? Poor Mia. That night, as moonlight light crept across her bedroom floor, Mia heard something. Was it wind? No, it was the sound of distant geese calling and powerful wings beating. Mia crept out of bed and spied something odd with her telescope in the garden below. Why, it was the plane she had smashed, as good as new. Hmm. Mia hurried outside for a closer look. The swish and chatter of geese grew louder and a wild wind began to blow. As the wind whipped around Mia's plane, it grew big enough to climb in. Suddenly, a huge gust of wind whisked Mia up and her enchanted plane into the air, up across the lake and away. Whee! Look at her. Climbing at terrific speed, Mia joined a flock of geese. Their silver feathers gleamed in the light of the moon as they rushed through the night. Up ahead, Mia spotted something familiar in the distance. Could it be? Hmm, what do you see? The geese, what could that be? You think it's Ben? Yes, it was Ben, waving and smiling. Together they swooped and skimmed and soared. Mia wished she could stay forever, but as the sun began to rise, she knew it was time to go. And in the beat of a wing, Mia woke up and found herself back in her bedroom. That's right. It was a dream, wasn't it? She was dreaming. Hmm. At breakfast time, a package arrived for her. Inside was a brand new plane but it had no wings. There was also a note. Dear Mia, I really need your help to finish this. No one else can make wings like you. Love, Ben. Look, he sent her like a care package, all these things, and then the airplane without wings. He's asking her to make the wings. Mia remembered her dream with Ben and the geese. Ben might be far away, but that didn't mean Mia had lost him forever. So she sat down at her table and got to work on the wings Ben had asked for. 
Mia thought of the geese with their long necks stretching and their wide wings beating. And over the week, she worked and she worked and she worked. In the springtime, it was finally ready. Mia fixed her wings onto the plane Ben had sent her and went down to the water's edge. She threw the plane up into the air and it soared higher than any plane she and Ben had ever made before. Mia and Ben could still make planes together, the best planes in the world. And they would always stay friends. For now, not even in an ocean, to keep them apart. What'd you think, readers? Sure did have a happy ending. Yeah, even though they were far apart, they were able to still make their friendship feel the same as it was before. They're best friends no matter how far apart they were. Didn't you love the illustrations and the words? Did you notice all the ways that the authors used to describe the planes flying and their feelings, the characters' feelings? That's exactly what we're going to be talking about over the next few days. We're going to come back to this book and we're really going to play around with a lot of the words. And in the meantime, you know what you can play around with? You can make your own planes. Do you want to watch me really quickly make a plane? Okay. So all you have to do is take a piece of paper, hold it in half long ways like a hot dog. See that? Okay. See where it's open at the top? I'm going to now make triangles. Just like that. See how I pulled that down? Just like that. I'm going to do it to the other side too. Take that corner and pull it down. I'm going to take this part and I'm going to fold it down to meet the edge down here. Here I go. And I'm going to do the same thing to this side. And when I open it up, look, I made some wings. I have a paper airplane that I can fly. Whee! Probably wouldn't go across the lake. It barely even went across my office. Why don't you make some paper airplanes? Go outside and see how far they can fly and glide and swoop. I hope to see you guys tomorrow. Have fun at math. Off you go. Hi guys, welcome back to Teaching in Room 9 and Math with Mrs. Wright. I hope you enjoyed your reading lesson with Mrs. Forth. And I thought we could get some movement in today by counting by tens because we've been working on place value. And I thought that would also be a good time for us to get up and move. So uh, last week we're doing like 10 second dance parties, but this week I know you are learning so many amazing exercises during our teaching in room nine movement classes. And so you can use some of those or um, you can always do jumping jacks. You can do squats. You can do lunges. Um, you can just jump up and down like each time. Um, you can also just stretch down to your toes or reach up to the sky. Okay, so each time we count by 10, I want you to pick a movement to do. You can do the same movement. You can do a different one each time, whatever you want to do, but just get your body moving. Okay, okay, so let's start by, let me first show you my board right here. And if this is 10, if the number that I'm about to show you is 10, I would like for you to jump up and down. Are you ready? Oh, before we start, remember, we are working towards these objectives. I can model with mathematics. I can show how 10 ones is the same as one group of 10, and I can represent numbers using place value understanding. Okay, ready? Here we go. If this is a group of 10, I want you to jump up and down. 
Ready? Okay. This 10. I think I just said if it's a group of 10, jump up and down. If this is 10, jump up and down. Yes! Woo! This is 10. Count with me. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I am going, this is a group of 10, so I am going to regroup it to the tens place. And I can use a group of 10 instead of 10 individual ones. So here we go. We have 10. 20, oops, I gotta scoot this back a little so you can see better. There we go. 25, is that right? 25? No. 30, right? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, you jumping, squatting, cartwheels, <laughs> 80, 90, 100. So we have a group of 100 here. Nice. Okay. So now let's keep counting and see. What would it be if we have 100 and then another group of 10? What would our number be? 110. Good. Awesome. We have 11 groups of 10. 11 groups of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. But when we count them by 10s, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110. So 11 groups of 10 makes 110. And this right here could also regroup into the hundreds place. And we could represent it by 110. Woo! Really working our brains. We're not gonna do too much of that. I just wanted to show you that while we were doing these amazing um, counting by 10. So I want to remind you that if you have paper at home, you can be following along with us um, and you can draw numbers like this. If you want to draw a 10, would be that, and if you want to draw a one, it would be that. So to draw, drawing would look like this is a 10, and this is a one, okay? All right, so we are going to get right into building numbers, okay? And today, I'm going to teach you some we're gonna kind of build on things we've briefly talked about, all right? So I am going to say that I, in the tens place, I want you to build three tens. Writing upside down is very interesting. Three tens and, let me push this down just a little, eight ones. Three tens and eight ones. Can you build me, if you want, by doing this, or maybe you can close your eyes and visualize it, can you build me the number in your mind or on paper that is three tens and eight ones? I'll give you a minute before I build it. Three tens and eight ones. Good, you have that visual, awesome. Okay, here we go, let's build the tens. Three tens and eight ones. Oh, 
five, six, seven, eight. Those two are pushed together. So just a little tip, when you're building numbers with place value, something that is really good to do is to set up your ones like a 10 frame so that you can easily see how many you have, okay? So we have three tens and eight ones. What number, what is, what number is three tens and eight ones? Hmm. Three tens and eight ones. Yeah, let's count it together. Here we go, good job. We're gonna count our tens by 10. 10, 20, 30. Now think, I counted all my tens, so when I switch over to the ones, am I still counting by tens? No, you're right, we're gonna be counting by one. So 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. Awesome work. Okay, so we have 38 is our number. Now, something that we talk about in math is ways to represent numbers. And numbers can be represented with base 10 blocks. They can be represented by drawing a picture. And they can also be represented in word form, okay? And that would be like this, 30, 30, Eight. 38, this is called word form because you're actually writing out the word 38 with letters. So we have word form, then we have the form that you're used to seeing the most and that is called standard form and that looks like this, 38. It's standard, you just write the digits. Three and eight makes the number 38. Okay, now we have what I feel like is the most important form for you to understand, okay? And this form is called expanded form. Expanded form is when you add the value, you represent the number by adding the value of each place. So, let's think through this. This is three tens in the tens place. But our value, how much this is worth, we can figure out by counting these by 10. Let's count it, 10, 20, 30. So the value of the tens place is 30, okay? And then we have the tens place plus the ones place. The value of the ones place is these blocks that kind of got a little jumbled when I moved it over. And the ones, we count by one. So we know that the value of the ones place is eight. So 30 plus eight, so your tens place plus your ones place makes the number 38. So this would be word form, standard form, expanded form. Word form, what's this form? Standard form, expanded form. Okay, and I like to teach myself a little trick, okay? So word form, push this up so you can see me a little bit better. Word form, you just write it out. Standard form is easy. Just write the digits, okay? And then expanded form, write the value. All right, try it with me. Word form. Just write the word. Standard form is easy. 
Just write the digits. Expanded form. Write the values. Okay, all right. Let's try another one of these at home. You think we can do that? Now, I am going to give it to you, the number that we are going to build, I'm gonna give it to you in expanded form. And let's see if you can figure that out, okay? Expanded form coming at you. Remember, you might have stuff at home to write on, you might not, that's totally fine. Here's the expanded form I want you to do. 20 plus seven. Can you do 20 plus seven? in expanded form. 20 plus seven. Remember, here are your options. You can draw it on paper, tens and ones. You can use base 10 blocks if you happen to have them. And you can visualize it and then I'll show it, okay? 20 plus seven. And this is what form? Expanded form, nice job, okay. Let's build 20 plus seven. <laughs> 20 plus seven, here we go. 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Yeah, so this number is 27. What is 27 made up of? How many groups of 10? Nice, 27 is made up of two groups of 10 and seven ones. Awesome job, guys. I hope I see you back here tomorrow for some more fun with place value. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.